Good morning. And welcome to All Faiths Unitarian Congregation. <clears throat> Today we are celebrating the Baha'i New Year, Naruz. My name is Michelle Gemma, and I will be leading our service today. Here you will find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people with many beliefs. You can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, and your very expansive heart. At All Faiths, we have more than one way of experiencing the world in understanding the sacred. So no matter who you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and no matter whom you love, you are truly welcome here. Is anyone here visiting for the first or second time? And if so, please raise your hand. Woo, welcome. <laughs> welcome, well, we're glad to have you here today with us, and hopefully we'll see you here again. If you are interested in see, joining All Faiths or finding out more about it, please see Way, Fran Way at the back of the room in our welcoming corner. So I have a couple of announcements. Most of them will be found on the back of your order of service. But I'm going to have Carol Heisberg come up. Heisberg come up. She has a couple of words to say. Good morning. Uh, I'm co-chair of our climate action team. I have a question. Um, this coming Wednesday is World Water Day. Did you know that? I didn't before <laughs> Joyce mentioned it in our last team meeting. But in honor of the occasion, our team is showing a movie this coming Wednesday at 2 p.m. right here. It's called Before the Flood. And it features Leonardo DiCaprio, mm -hmm. who is a committed climate activist. Now, we have a, a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board, and we're asking anybody who's interested to sign up so we'll have an idea of how many are going to show up. Anyway, y'all come. I'll see you there. Thank you, Carol. Next Sunday, we have our annual meeting here at 9.30 a.m. Um, we'll hold the meeting, excuse me, we will hold our annual meeting to elect board members and nominating committee members and to approve our budget for fiscal year April 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024. Please plan to attend, and if you cannot be here, you can get your absentee ballot today. Now, if I could ask you all to either rise in your body or in spirit, we will sing together hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. The words are on the back of your order of service. Thank you. As Peter Erickson comes forward to light the chalice, please join in reciting the words in your order of service. As we light our chalice, let us contemplate how our lives are enhanced by the New Year's celebrations of many faiths around the world.
Well, good morning, everyone, and happy St. Patrick's Day weekend for all of you who are Irish and those of you who wish that you were. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have that Irish spirit. And also, Happy New Year. Today, where our speaker is going to be telling us about the Baha'i faith, which is very much like all faiths, and they are celebrating their New Year this year. So that's a nice thing at all faiths. We get to celebrate New Year many times during the year. <laughs> okay. And at this time, I invite you to come forward and share with us your personal joys, sorrows, or gratitude. And we ask no political speeches. Just to let you guys know, it's not on the program, but we do have RE today, so I will be taking the children out. And Rachel is, has volunteered to lead our child and youth program until we get a new child and youth director. So thank you, Rachel. She has a lot of experience with young people. Um, good morning. I am Charlotte Blitt, and I'm a uh, founding member, and I just wanted to share news about Jan Guardiano, who's also a founding member, and she lived downtown in Calusa Harbor High Rise Retirement Community, and she was evacuated early October after the storm made those building that building uh, unlivable for some of the people, so they evacuated people. She was taken over to Pompano Beach and put in a retirement place over there which is, looks quite nice from the outside. I came down with COVID when I was over there and had hoped to see her, so I had to stay 25 feet away from her and talk with sign language almost. But anyway, the news is that she will be brought back sometime in May. Each, they kept telling them two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Now they're saying May. So keep her in your, your mind and hearts. She's feeling pretty upbeat. We text twice a day and her spirits sound good. She saw a cardiologist and she's doing well. So anyway, keep her in your thoughts and also drop her a line if you want to. Thank you. We'd light a candle for Jan and also for Charlotte who has recovered from COVID. Do we have any others that would like to share any joy, sorrow, or gratitude? I'm lighting this candle uh, in gratitude for our board and for our treasurer and our administrator. They've done such a wonderful job. Those of you who couldn't be with us this morning for our finance meeting, uh, we are, are very, very blessed to have such wonderful leadership and people here that are looking into every single little detail and managing things through these very difficult times of COVID and the hurricane. So uh, I am very grateful and I'm sure all of you appreciate them as well. And I'm lighting this candle for all of you who have joys and sorrows in your hearts and may you have a wonderful week and reach out to those who are unable to be with us. Thank you, Joyce. I'd like to ask everyone now to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let us turn to our minds and our hearts to today's service and contemplate our blessings. Ding! Ding. I love you guys. <laughs> Please rise in body or spirit as we sing together hymn number one, two, three, Spirit of Life.
Our opening words are, what is the significance of the Baha'i New Year, Naruz? It is a time to learn about each other, our cultures, and our world. And Naruz is a reminder of everything we have in common. It promotes reconciliation and good neighborliness. It echoes the values of the United Nations of peace, human rights, and dignity. Of course, words are printed on the back of the order of service. Sleeves, he ain't just putting on the ritz. Our God is an awesome God. There is thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. And the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of Eden. It wasn't for no reason that he helped us all. His return is better, closer, we can better be believing. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And when the sky was voidless in the void of the night, God is an awesome God. He spoke to the darkness and created the light. Our God is an awesome God. The judgment and wrath he poured out on Sodom, his mercy and grace he gave us all. I hope that we have not too quickly forgotten. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom. Power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Thank you. Our reading is, in thousands upon thousands of locations around the world, the teachings of the Baha'i faith inspire individuals and communities as they work to improve their own lives and contribute to the advancement of civilization. Baha'i faith beliefs address such essential themes as the oneness of God and religion, the oneness of humanity and freedom from prejudice, the inherent nobility of the human being, the progressive revelation of religious truth, the development of spiritual qualities, the integration of worship and service, the fundamental equality of the sexes, the harmony between religion and science, the centrality of justice to all human endeavors, the importance of education, and the dynamics of the relationships that are bind together, that are bind together with individuals, communities, and institutions as humanity advances towards its collective maturity. Now, if we could please rise in body or spirit, we'll sing together hymn number 318, We Would Be One. We 
Thank you. Our speaker today is Chris Runke. He is a member of the Baha'i faith and a friend of all faiths. Please welcome Chris Runke. Well, I'm delighted to be here, and I thank everyone who made it possible. I thank Joyce and everyone else. And so, actually, the, uh, there's a relationship between the Un Unitarian Church and the Baha'i Faith that goes way back. And so we, have a, we owe a debt of gratitude to the Unitarians. The first person to come to America to speak about the Baha'i Faith was the son of Baha'u'llah, Baha'u'llah was the founder of the faith. Um, his son was Abdul Baha. Baha'u'llah spent the last 40 years of his life in various prisons and dungeons throughout the Persian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. And uh, he died in 1892. But his son Abdul Baha was kept in prison all the way till 1908. And but when, as soon as he was released, he came to America, well, in 1912. And uh, the, he did a speaking tour, and it was the Unitarian churches all across America, from the East Coast all the way to California, that gave Abdul Baha a chance to speak and to. Um, and so there's a debt of we, there's a, we owe a debt of gratitude to the Unitarian Church. So, let's see. Um, so. Uh, my goal today is to just share, there's so much I could talk about, there's nothing I would rather talk about, but my goal today is just to share one idea, maybe the principal idea of the Baha'i Faith. And I'm going to make a very bold assertion here that the idea that I'm going to share with you right now is, I believe, the most important, the most potent the most powerful philosophical idea articulated since the time of Jesus. Now I know that sounds incredible, right? But, but I'm going to uh, give me follow my logic for a minute, and I think that at least you th there might be true what I'm saying. At least when it was laid out to me in s something like this way, it, it, it made sense to me, and, and still does. Everything that I see and read and experience only confirms me in the value of this philosophical principle that I'm going to share with you. So I said it was the greatest philosophical idea since the time of Jesus. So, well, if it's based, let's go back to that time. 
So let's, I'm going to share with you two, arguably, two of the greatest philosophical ideas ever articulated. One by the Apostle John when he said that God is love. So, okay, I admit that's a theological idea, but okay, fine. But God is love. And the second one is Jesus himself saying that uh, love your neighbor, which makes sense and made sense even to the people at that time. But Jesus took it a step further and said, love your enemies. And I think, I hope you'll agree with me that, uh, you know, that this is, uh, that there could be no higher ethical ideal. It would be impossible to articulate a higher ethical ideal than that. So if we take that as a sort of premise, um, well, let's take a look at that for a second. So, okay, so love your enemies. So if you were going to give mankind a report card over the last 2,000 years, you know, what kind of a grade would, would you give us, you know? With, with, and that of course, there have been wonderful, very important exceptions, but in general, we haven't done very well with that, living that out. Arguably, Jesus' most important speech is the one thing that we have done the least well at finding a way to uh, live up to. And Jesus died quite young. Uh, he didn't have a chance. If he had lived longer, maybe he would have fleshed it out. Maybe he would have explained to us how we're supposed to do that, but he didn't have a chance to do that. So what if I were to say that a man came along about 1,800 years later, Baha'u'llah, which in Persian language means the glory of God, and actually answered that question, actually gave a good answer to that question of how we're supposed to love our enemies. So if somebody did that, don't you think it might might warrant then being called one of the greatest philosophical ideas since that time. And, and so I believe that Baha'u'llah did, and, and Baha'is believe that Baha'u'llah had, does have an answer for this. So sometimes I look at it like this. It's sort of like a conversation where the challenge is given 2,000 years ago and there was an 1,800-year gap between when the question was posed and when the answer was given. But uh, it's a good answer, and so, you know, we're worth waiting for. And of course, I'm going to share that answer with you uh, now, today. And so, um, so I'll, I just will. I'll share that answer. So, uh, it, it's, it's so important to Baha'i thought that it actually has a name. This idea that I'm going to share with you is, has a name. It's called the noble cause. And the noble cause, and also uh, uh, attend to the fact that it is philosophies. And I'm going to give you the noble cause. I'm going to share it with you. It doesn't. There's no mention of God in in the noble cause. Um, so it appeals. It can appeal to everyone. It can appeal to people of every faith, and people of, of w secular people, people without. In other words, it. It has a power to unify mankind in a way that, that no other philosophical or religious ideas uh, has. Uh, th this is my opinion, not just my opinion. Um, so anyway, here it is, the noble cause. It's easy to articulate. It's just one long sentence. And uh, so it goes like this. It says, uh, our goal, our goal, our purpose, the reason we're here, the meaning of life, if you want to put it that way. Our goal is to build a world of peace and beauty and goodness and prosperity widely shared, not just to a privileged few, but to all people everywhere on every continent and to build that world against the backdrop of a golden age of culture and civilization. That, my friend, that's the noble cause. 
that the Baha'i faith asserts that that's why we're here. That gives a purpose and a meaning to our lives. Many of you are no doubt familiar with a book by Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning, in which he says that that's the thing that we can't live without, is meaning. And we can do pretty well without food and shelter and all kinds of things, but not without meaning. And if you look at our world, if you look at our very divided world, maybe, maybe that's what we're lacking, right? Is a, is a purpose, a meaning, an ideal, so beautiful, so good, so desirable. Well, just look at the noble cause for a second. It is uh, such a beautiful ideal that it has a power to heal the divisions in our world. In other words, when you articulate the noble cause, it, uh, should, it appeals, it, it, there's a kind of instinctive, well, I'll, I'll put it this way. So the, the, let's, building that world of the, the, uh, envisioned by the noble cause, I'm sure that most people in this room said, yeah, of course, right? Isn't that what you said in your, of course we want to live in that world, right? Of course we want to build that world, not just for ourselves, but for others, right? Of course, right? Of course, <laughs> right? And so, but that of course is a beautiful thing. That of course we want to build that world, right? So what I'm saying is not new. It's something that you, it's almost an instinct. People of a, with a good heart and a sound mind instinctively say, of course we should build that world, right? So now, if we have a shared ideal, so this is the power of ideals, and that's what we lack, a shared ideal. And it's a shared ideal that transcends every division, rich and poor, religious or non-religious, uh, black or white, conservative or liberal, Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter, all of these things are uh, healed in this. It's a transcendent vision. So anyway, let me go back, oh, let me go back. To, so how does that relate to Jesus saying, um, uh, love your enemies? So, and why is that an answer to that question of how we, how we should love our enemies? Well, if we build that world, guess who gets to live in that world with us? Our enemies, right? That's how you love your enemies. Build that world and invite them to come and live, to help you build it and to live there with you. So first of all, if you were to do that, um, nine tenths of the reasons why they became your enemies in the first place probably would not even have arisen, right? And, uh, and so um, the noble cause. Uh, I want to say it one more time, if you don't mind, that our goal, our goal is and ought to be to build a world of peace and beauty and goodness and prosperity widely shared, not just for a privileged few, but for all people everywhere on every continent, and to build that world against the backdrop of a golden age of culture and civilization. What could be a more noble, what could be a noble, I think, you know, when I heard that, man, I just wanted to put my shoulder to the wheel, you know, and, and help with that. And, um, let me check my notes. I, I, that more or less, that's what I wanted to share with you, is the noble cause, and to set it up uh, to see the importance of it. And now this is just one of the ideas of Baha'u'llah. There are many, many wonderful ideas too, and Baha'u'llah himself was a wonderful man, very fascinating life. But I decided not to focus on him because if you don't think his ideas are, val are valuable, then what would it matter? who he was or when he lived, right? But if you find this idea interesting and inspiring, then maybe you will make an effort to, to, to take an interest in who he was. But he did live a fascinating life. He spent the last 40 years of his life in prison, uh, in various dungeons and prisons, and, and kind of uh, just, you know, incredibly, the last prison that he was in, where he died, was at the foot of Mount Carmel, in what is now Israel. So it's, uh, so the Israel, so that's where the Baha'i centers are in Israel, uh, near Haifa, in, uh, 
at Mount Carmel. Uh, he was a great poet. You know, he was Persian, and you know, I'm sure there are many people in here that love the great Sufi poets. And so he was not a Sufi, but well, in a way, he is a Sufi. There are so many connections between Sufism and and also the Sufis. Con the Sufis have a concept called Razul which means a messenger of God, and they definitely consider Baha'u'llah to be a messenger of God. Um, anyway, he's a great poet. He wrote a book called The Hidden Words. That's how I got turned on to Baha'u'llah in the first place, was through uh, this beautiful book of poetry called The Hidden Words, um, when he realized that he was a, uh, had been called to deliver a message to mankind. Uh, the the Baha'i faith is very much in the Abrahamic, it's an Abrahamic faith. So it draws a direct line from Abraham to Moses to Jesus to, uh, they include Muhammad, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, you know. But anyway, I, dr I draw the line from, from Abraham to Moses to Jesus to Baha'u'llah. In other words, this is one long story and that Baha'u'llah, that's what uh, Michelle referred to as uh, progressive revelation, that this is one long story, and that Baha'u'llah's message is uh, the latest and most and, you know, uh, uh, important to us, important chapter in this long story. And uh, anyway, so he's a great poet, and a great writer. He, he lived for 40 years in prisons. Well, the funny thing is, that gave him plenty of time to write. <laughs> so he's written, you know, and a lot, everything's been translated into English. And unfortunately, the English that it has been translated into is a kind of old-fashioned Victorian English that most people find very hard to read. So that's one of the things that I've been doing, is taking the old English and turning it into modern English. That's been my you know, my wonderful task or, you know, joy to do. So I've done that with his poems, with the hidden words, and I've done that with various prayers and so forth. And well, you can see I'm just rambling now, so I'm, I guess I'm finished with my talk. <laughs> but are, are there any questions or comments, or would anyone like to say anything? Or? Yes, sir. Yes, we have a wonderful little Baha'i community. Uh, we meet over, and we don't have a church or anything, but I think that's okay. We meet over in J.C. Park, which is in Cape Coral, right on the banks of the Caloosahatchee River, and we meet under the trees at a picnic table, and we gather there uh, every other Saturday. We gather there, and one of our members is someone, uh, I think people maybe know Bill Metz. Does anyone know Bill? Yeah, one of the great uh, musicians and folk singers of, that lives in Lee County, and he always brings his guitars and ukuleles, and we sing. And so, and I don't even know, I should have come prepared with a phone number or something like that. I don't have that. But uh, yeah, I think if you look up Baha'i Faith, Fort Myers, uh, you'll find some way to contact. Yeah, come down to the, uh, it's very informal. We just talk, and we just, uh, and we say prayers, we say, and it's, it's like all faiths, when we say our prayers, you can, people bring prayers from every religious tradition, from the Native American traditions, from, you can read from the Book of Psalms, or, you know, the, the quote from the, from the New Testament, because this is the main, uh, I'll give you one other philosophical idea of Baha'u'llah, and again, this is not going to seem new to you. It, when somebody laid out the principles of the Baha'i Baha faith to me, my response was, oh yes, I had already figured that out myself, you know, like, and on and on and on. So what I'm going to say, you're probably going to say, it's quite likely you'll say, oh yes, I already have come to that conclusion. So Baha'u'llah says, fine. There is, and there always, there has ever been only one religion. What we and that religion is this, to know God, to seek God, to seek to know Him, to love Him, because to know Him is to love Him, and then to s try to figure out what His will is and to do His will. That's the only religion there's ever been. What we call different religions are just different attempts to do that, right? Different ways that God has revealed Himself in different languages, in different time periods, in different cultures, right? 
in every possible way imaginable, God has tried to, you know, reveal himself to us, right? So there's only one religion, which is to love God. So having said that, if we say that, oh, and then the great, great uh, consequence of, of, of accepting that truth is that uh, we're called, Baha'is are called to honor all of the saints and prophets from all of the different religions. We're also called to read the sacred writings of all the great religions. Well, what a gold mine that is. What a gold mine that is. And here's a way that I ex look at it. So it's a, all of the great world religions are in themselves valid, are true. I mean, the teachings of Jesus are as true as you know, can be. The teachings of Buddha are. If you've never read the Bhagavad Gita, which are the teachings of Krishna, yeah, it's, it's so clearly the truth. But each one of them, it's sort of like looking at a painting, right? Like, it's true, right? But something as wonderful and magnificent as God is not a painting, it's a sculpture. You gotta walk all the way around and see him from every single angle, right? And then, only then, do you even catch a, you know, a hint of the, the glory of God, right? But walk all the way around. Honor all of the great saints and prophets. Read all of their sacred writings. Now, what a, and it's, you know, so that's a very rich thing, too. You know, but that's an invitation to do that as well. Uh, Dr. Robinson. You began with the people question. And this doesn't just include the first time here. You began with love is God and God's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Throughout man's history, mankind, we have had gods. And there have been, every tribe have, has a religion. Do you have any idea, or does Mahai have any answer to the reason why that has been an abstract failure? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah. Um, well, uh, let me answer. Let me, let me, okay. He, he, this was my answer. Because everything up till now has been so divided. And, and exclusive. In other words, I belong to this church, or I belong to that church, or, I, or I'm an atheist, or, you know, it's all these warring factions, right? And, and so I want to say also that when it says that the, the way to know God is through all the different religions, it, the, the Baha'i faith is so, uh, what's that word? Broad that it even includes the science. It includes science as one of those ways in which to see the world. You know, it, it doesn't just include religious people or God-believing people. It includes all, everyone, I including science. But to, to get back to your answer, to, you know, to your question, you know, what it, what, maybe there's just something, uh, an ideal, here's the hope. Here's the hope, that if you paint a picture of an ideal that is so good and so beautiful and so desirable that the vast majority of people, upon hearing it, will simply say, of course. Now, you can't get everyone. You're never, never going to get everyone, right? So there's always going to be, you know, on the bell curve, there's always going to be the outlier. There are always going to be outliers, you know? But um, I think the majority of the people, um, and well, well, let me just answer, uh, here's my response, here's a response. It's to the point now where we have to build that world, right? We have to build that world. We're either gonna build that world or we're gonna mess it up. Seriously mess it up, right? 
so you might say that logic alone even if it take all the goodness and the love thy neighbor and all take that all out of the equation merely for human survival on this planet we have to find a way to live together and we have to find a way to stop raping the natural the planet itself the, the the environment right we have to find sus a sustainable way to live together so it becomes an imperative it's an imperative to any thinking person to any thinking person it's an imperative that we find uh, a way to live together in peace and harmony and in a sustainable world and i think that uh, i'll end with this one sentence I, d I believe that the noble cause is the only philosophy that's ever been articulated that at least has the, po the potential of making this concept of the brotherhood of man a reality. It has the potential to do that. Now, whether we, we have to step up and make it happen. It doesn't happen by itself. But at least, logically speaking, it has the potential of uniting all humanity into one noble cause. So thank you so much for having me here today. Thanks, Chris. Gee. Oh, you, oh. there's another question. I just had a thought here about one of the steps that we can take to help us be more inclusive is to use inclusive language. Instead of mankind, we can say humankind. Instead of the brotherhood of mankind, we can talk about community. I mean, to be inclusive in that simple language. Mm -hmm. I have heard no female pronouns or anything used today by any of us, and the songs refer to God as he. So I encourage people to to be intentional about making our language more inclusive. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> Jeez, I feel like I've got a college credit. <laughs> 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 Every time I come here, I should be get my PhD in a couple of <laughs> weeks. Sorry, <laughs> it just hit me. <laughs> wow. Anyway, we appreciate your generous donations, which support our dedicated staff, our beautiful facilities, inspiring services for sure, interesting activities, social outreach, and everything else that we do here at All Faiths. So if you are with us on live stream service, you can send our checks your tricks to, <laughs> to, um, to us directly, or you can go to allfaithsuu.org and hit the donate button. And we will take your morning offerings right now. Hit it. <laughs> There comes a time when we heed a certain cause and the world must come together as one. There are people dying and it's time to lend a hand to life, the greatest gift of all. We can't go on Pretending day by day that someone, somewhere, will soon make a change. We are all a part of God's great big family. And the truth, you know, love is all we need. We are the world. We are the children. We are the ones to make a brighter day, so let's start giving. There's a choice we're making. We're saving our own lives. It's true, we make a better day, just you and me.
Send them your heart so they know that someone cares and our lives will be stronger and free. As God has shown us by turning stone to bread, so we all must lend a helping hand. We are the world. We are the children. It's true, we make a better day, just you and me. When you're down and out, there seems no hope at all. But if you just believe, there's nowhere we can fall. Yeah, let's realize that a change is soon to come. Then we stand together as one. choice we're making we're saving our own lives it's true we make a better day just you and me it's true we make a better day just you and me thank you thank you our closing words about by Baha Ullah. Happy, the one who enters upon the first day of the month of Baha, the day which God hath consecrated to this great name. In blessed be who evidence, evidences on this day the bounties that God hath bestowed upon him. He verily is one of those who shows forth thanks to God through actions betokening the Lord's Munificence, which hath encompassed all the worlds. This day, verily, is the crown of all the months, in the source thereof, the day on which the breath of life is wafted over all created things. Great is the blessedness of him who greets it with radiance and joy. We testify that he is, in truth, among those who are blissful. Our postlude, let there be peace on earth. Those words are in the back of your hymnal, second to the last page. You can sing that together. Right?
Thank you. We want to take this time to thank Chris Runke for his message about the Baha'i faith. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We also want to thank Carlos Garcia for the wonderful music. Brad slash Regina <laughs> on our camera. Um, Ed Elrod on sound. Joe Gayton, our sexton. Joyce Schaefer for these unbelievable like pussy walls. <laughs> oh, I love them. <laughs> it looks like maybe. And your name. Me? Yes, you are leading us. You are. Michelle. Okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think maybe Linda's back there with the uh, hospitality, but whoever it is, it looks awesome, and we thank you. Um, the greeters, as always, it's awesome to walk in and see their faces and make you feel really good. And it's always good to be connected to us and all of us, and wherever we go, we love you. <laughs> now, if Peter could come up and put out the chalice, we'll say these words together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. Go now in peace. Naruz, Happy New Year. Yay. Go enjoy that delicious food back there. See you next week. Thank you.